Hey everybody, welcome to this technical analysis video series on the Vortex Indicator. So what we have here is an indicator, a lower indicator that oscillates a number between about 1.5 and 0.5. So you can see here on the Y axis, we've got um, these numbers here that start um, right at one and then go up and then go down. And so what you can see here, the one is very similar to the zero line on the MACD. And so what you can do with this is you can really use it to gauge when a trend is reversing or a trend is gaining steam or a trend is ending. And you do that by looking at the vortex negative, which is the red, and the vortex positive, which is the blue. So to start out with, the vortex indicator does start out with a default 14 period length, just like most oscillators out there. And so what that means is it's looking back 14 periods. In this case, this is the daily chart um, on NVIDIA. So we're looking back 14 days. And so what you can see here is the vortex indicator really is oscillating, as I mentioned, between these areas. But each stock is going to really oscillate differently around these values. And it depends what time frame you're on. So for example, if I have this time frame on the 14, notice how we're really finding a threshold here right around, let's say, 1.25, give or take. And then on the bottom, we're finding a threshold where these reverse right around, let's say, 0.65. And so this isn't perfect, it's just a general area. And you'll notice here, whenever the, the uh, vortex indicator positive or negative on the top, this is what I use, you could use the bottom as well, but anytime you see the red, which is the negative, go above this general threshold, notice you're finding a bottom. Notice as well, when you cross, the red is actually crossing the blue after it's converging, this is confirming the trend for a further move up. Now, the problem with the vortex indicator is it can be very sensitive. And so there's a lot of time where, notice here, it looks like you know we were gonna have a continuation down, there was gonna be a perfect short, and then the vortex indicator kind of um, you know false signals and then does this weird kind of thing that looks like a, you know, an earthquake uh, reader. So what you can do here is you can actually mess around with the inputs and this will actually help you a little more. So um, there are times where this won't false signal. So notice here, we've got the same exact setup. We've got a big divergence between the positive and the negative, the blue and the red. And you can see here, the blue touches this threshold after diverging from the red for quite some time. We've got almost this top here. Notice the price starts going up but the blue indicator starts to uh, converge towards the red. And then finally, when you've got the blue crossing the red right here, that's your confirmation for the downtrend. Now, that is isn't a perfect world. Notice that this doesn't always happen. You could have taken you know, a couple instances like this where, oh man, look, it's in a perfect spot. Um, this would have actually not been a bad time to you know, be bearish on this, but notice that you would have been um, kind of false signaled on the actual cross. Because when it crossed, noticed we bottomed out here and then continued up. So these are kind of finding more of the micro trends. Let's say you go to the vortex indicator 25, which is essentially taking uh, five weeks of data because there's five trading days in a week. You multiply that by five and you've got um, something like this. And notice how, how I mentioned if we change the input here, this threshold is, notice how this isn't respecting the 0.25 threshold very much anymore. We have one time. Generally, what I do is I actually put two. So I create you know, the top threshold and then I create a kind of a secondary one here. And uh, that's how I'll gauge you know, where the trend is, if it's kind of uh, really extreme, if it's just getting started. And so notice, um, there's on the longer term time frames, you're gonna have more of these longer term divergences. Notice these divergences can happen for quite some time. So here, we've got this big divergence here. I can extend these further. Notice that we've got the topping out here. Notice that it's not a perfect top. Notice that you, you've got some noise here. So this isn't like an end all be all. This isn't always a perfect signal, but it will show you when there's exhaustion starting to happen. And then the actual cross, the positive crossing the negative to the downside here is actually the confirmation of the trend moving down. Same thing here. Notice how before we had a lot of these false signals, but notice here, we really didn't actually cross um, on the longer term side, right until we've dropped down. But notice here how this was the uh, signal for the longer term uptrend 
where we moved from you know 153 all the way to 193. Notice when we hit 193, we get above this threshold, we're topping out, then notice here, blue crosses the red, we have a slight false signal here at first, still moves down, but we have a slight dead cap bounce, and then the true move happens when the 25, the negative, the blue, um, crosses the red on the 25 period, and that's your longer term move. Same thing here. It's, it's, it's like a vortex of how water works. It's just kind of, and that's where this indicator comes from. It's just kind of oscillating back and forth how water um, vortexes work, uh, very similar to um, the financial markets, and that's honestly how this indicator was created. So notice here, same thing. We bottom out. Red hits this threshold. We uh, are bottoming, not necessarily exactly at this point, but it's a bottoming point. And then we've got the cross here, and then we've got that continuation of the trend for, you know, about a month or so. Now, um, you know, you go into these periods where you've got a lot of chop, and it can be really hard to figure out which way the trend wants to go. There can be a lot of false signals. Notice here we've got a uh, kind of a convergence, but then it actually doesn't materialize. So there's a lot of different ways that you can, um, you can use this, but you always have to make sure that you're using it with something else. So for example, maybe you're using this with the RSI. So if I turn on the RSI here, notice that um, in this case, we're on the RSI 10. So we're probably going to want to optimize this to uh, reflect the 25 as well. And so then what you can see is a lot of the time, Notice how we became very, uh, this is kind of, we're going to have to change this. Notice how the RSI never becomes overbought here. So we're actually going to have to kind of do what we did here. Um, we could do this two ways. We could either just go here and change this from 70 to, let's say, 60, and we'll capture the top of that a little better. All right, notice how we're overbought here. So you can see anytime you're overbought and the vortex indicator is in this threshold, you're generally topping out. Same thing here. The RSI is oversold. The vortex indicator has diverged with the uh, pot with the uh, negative um, above the, the positive, showing that you know the, the downtrend is exhausting. And then you've got your reversal, you've got your uh, RSI breaking out, and then you've got your cross. So it's really important to use these with other indicators. You can use them with the RSI, you can use them with the percent range. Or you can use them with the indica any indicator, really. It's Everyone's got their own style. But what I wanted to show here is just, you know, changing the inputs on lower indicators is also very important. So, um, you know, just the 14 is the default. A lot of people look at the default, so sometimes it becomes self-fulfilling. But if you want to get, you know, a slightly different read on the indicator, it's always good to uh, change those up a little bit. So the last thing that I'm going to end with is if you are a user of TrendSpider and you want to utilize this indicator and other indicators together, let's say that we want to know when the vortex positive crosses down through the negative and when the RSI breaks down below 55. To me, that would signal possibly a breakdown. What you can do is you can go into create alert, multi-factor alert. We'll name this potential breakdown expires in you know 30 days you can you can make this as long as you'd like and then all we need to do is say the condition and what we're looking for here is the daily indicator RSI has crossed down through the constant level of we said 55 so that's our first condition our second condition is the actual vortex indicator cross which is just the same thing you click condition go to the daily, you go to indicator this time, and you go to, uh, instead of uh, the RSI, we would go to the um, vortex indicator positive, has crossed down through the indicator daily vortex indicator negative. So whenever that blue crosses down through the red, that will be our second condition, and that's when we know that the trend is possibly reversing to the downside or the upside, depending on which um, vortex indicator, uh, positive or negative, that you're looking at. Thank you everybody for watching this video and all the videos in the technical analysis series by TrendSpider. If you have any questions at all, please comment below and make sure to subscribe for future videos ahead.